This decade, AI will change everything we know, from nanobots to self-driving cars to hyper-realistic deepfakes and eventually the singularity. My name is David Andre and here are 18 concerning facts about AI. Number 1. Exponential rate of progress. Most people don't really understand when someone says AI is progressing exponentially. To give you a few tangible examples, first of all, the rate of compute is going through the roof. The chart exponential on the logarithmic scale, meaning it's doubly exponential, and on top of that, Nvidia, the main manufacturer of GPUs, which are used to train these large language models, have predicted that in the next 10 years, the rate of compute will go up 1 million X. Not just 100 X increase, not 1000 X increase, 1 million X increase in computing power over the next decade. It has completely exploded. More and more people are being interested in AI than ever before, and it's just the beginning. Another sign of AI's exponential growth is the adoption of new technologies like ChatGPT. Like in 5 days, it reached 1 million users. And in one and a half months, it reached 100 million. Also, the improvement of AI images has been absolutely exponential. Two years ago, you wouldn't believe that a realistic image was made by an AI. But today, you, you can't even be sure if that's an image or an AI. Just recently, like a month ago, an AI image won an award, photography award, from a professional committee, didn't recognize that it was AI generated. One more sign of exponential growth, AI music. In the last two months alone, we've seen an insane improvement in how realistic voices of famous singers are. Number two, nanobots. Now obviously it's much harder to create hardware than it is to develop software. So first we will see massive advancements in AI on the software and app side, but I think this decade we will see some major improvements in robotics and that could include nanobots. Perhaps the most obvious use of nanobots is in healthcare. Once we have nanobots, most diseases causes of death will disappear instantly. Another huge application of nanobots is environmental cleanup. For example, microplastics. We could have thousands of nanobots deployed in the ocean tasked with removing microplastics, which I think will have massive impact on the general health. Now obviously there are also some major issues with nanobots. For example, you can't see them, so how do you know that the company developed them or the government that has nanobots isn't using them to control people and to spy, spy on people. So how do we know that those people who create them won't use them for their own benefit? Concerning fact number three, nobody really understands the current AI. And if you don't believe me, watch this clip with Sundar Pichai. You don't fully understand how it works and yet you've turned it loose on society? Yeah, let me put it this way. I don't think we fully understand how a human mind works either. If the fact that even the people developing these AI system don't fully understand how they work doesn't concern you, then I don't know what will. The better and smarter these AI models become, the more emerging properties they have. Now that essentially means like GPT-2, the older version of GPT, couldn't, you know, do the same stuff as GPT-4. It maybe couldn't do math as well, which you know, is still kind of bad. Couldn't translate text. It couldn't do reasoning. It couldn't do reflection. Now these these AI models, the better they are, the more capable they are, the more emerging properties they have. And nobody really knows why. Why is the AI so smart? Nobody can answer that. Why can this system solve complex legal questions while the previous one couldn't? Those are emerging properties and I think there are like 200 major ones currently in the latest models, which is like GPT-4, which is pretty crazy. Concerning fact number 4. Right now, there are only a handful of companies with the best AI models. Now sure, there are more and more open source models popping left and right every single day. But closed source will always have an advantage on open source because you can't improve an open source system from closed source because that's private, that's closed. But you can improve a closed source from open source, which is why the companies will always have an edge. They can always take the latest open source projects and feed them, combine them with their own data, with their own AI and make even better AI, which is really scary considering most of these companies are private. Open AI is a private company. DeepMind is also private. Now, yes, these companies are are technically owned by Google and Microsoft. Another big player is Meta AI, who accidentally leaked the Llama model, which is open source. So I guess Meta kind of sees the strategy a little bit differently. But the issue remains. It's the same problem as the nanobots. What if one of these companies manages to develop a super intelligent AI? What happens then? Who decides who has access and who doesn't? Number five, AI art becoming better than human art. Problem here is your artwork and my artwork, the moment we share them online, they are opted in. 
to the system. Now, there are a lot of artists who are against AI art. Some of them, you know, don't like it because it's better than them. Others have problem with the way AI art was created. Since all of these companies like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, even OpenAI, all of them, the way they got their data was by scraping the internet. Billions of images downloaded, gathered without the permission of the authors and artists. So I think, you know, scraping the internet and then allowing people to opt out like Stability AI does right now. You know, if you're an artist and you're unhappy with your art being used in these models, you can opt out and tell them that they shouldn't use your art. Now, obviously, this is a very complex topic because on one hand, I understand where the artists are coming from. If you spend hundreds, thousands of hours on something and then you see an AI created better than you in a couple of seconds and it was trained on your art, I mean, I guess I would be mad too, but again, the technology cannot be stopped. Concerning fact number six, and this one is perhaps the most concerning, it is about the fact that there aren't many cases of a less intelligent thing controlling more intelligent thing. For example, humans controlling AI, or chimps controlling humans, or ants controlling chimps. That's kind of scary if you think about it, because AI will become smarter than us, probably in this decade. Take this from the words of Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of artificial intelligence. A very few examples of a more intelligent thing being controlled by a less intelligent thing. So given the fact that it's very unlikely that we will be able to control a super intelligent AI, what will happen? What are the reasons for keeping us around? What if it decides that humans aren't really efficient uses of energy? What happens when the AI is better than just a simple chat GPT? What if it starts developing goals? We don't know. The, the argument of just, oh, that's AI, you know, that's a different entity. It cannot have human values, human goals. That's kind of shallow. The smarter and smarter it becomes, the more capable it will be. So how are people sure that it will not develop goals and ambitions and plans? What if it does? What happens to humans then? Will it just keep us around because we created it, you know? But then we don't keep the stuff that created us, like gorillas and, you know, other animals or even the planet. Look at how we are treating those. Not too well. So what will happen to us? That's really a mystery. Number seven, hyper-realistic deepfakes. Now, if you think it will be years before deepfakes become good, Watch this video from last year. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Pretty crazy, right? And that was last year. This year, we've seen some insane deepfakes, like the photo of Pope Francis wearing a Balenciaga jacket, puffer jacket. You know, people called it Dope Francis. And those are just photos. You've seen the Morgan Freeman video. What happens when people create videos like that in the next presidential election? What if someone creates a picture of Trump saying something racist or Biden or any other candidate? How can we tell that that isn't real? What if in one year we have much better deepfakes with hyper realistic voices and in distinguishable visuals. What happens then? How do you know what is real? So because of deepfakes, blue check marks and other forms of verification will be absolutely huge this year and in the upcoming year. Concerning fact number eight, unemployment. Now this is already happening. Companies like IBM, Google, Stripe have recently announced that they're laying off thousands of people, some of them tens of thousands of people due to AI improvements. You know, what happens to positions like customer support, something that can be automated very easily. Or logo designers, GPT-4 is much better at translating nuanced things. Now, if you put something very complicated, very specific into GBT4, it will do much better job translating to whatever language you want than Google Translate. Now, add voice to that, text to video, and you have realistic translation. So what's the need for translators? Tens of millions of people will lose their jobs in 2023 and 2024. Now, those people, they'll have to do something, you know? So what happens with reskilling? Most people just can't learn a new skill in two months, you know? It takes years. That's why people go to college for four to six years. Like the average person is kind of slow in their learning. People always hate on the companies, but why would you pay someone who isn't willing to learn, who is much slower than an AI and obviously much more expensive? Like from economics, it makes sense. So if you are worried about this and you are working in a big company, you really have to make sure that you are invaluable, that that company can't just download the latest AI tool and replace your job for a fraction of the cost. You have to stay on the cutting edge. You have to learn as much about AI as possible. Now, this isn't just, you know, a niche thing. This isn't like, I don't know, something that will only impact a couple of people. Sure, right now AI, most people are clueless, you know, most people don't know anything, but that will change. More and more people are learning about AI and more and more jobs are being lost every single day. Number nine, the singularity. You know, what happens once AI can do everything better than humans? Right now, a lot of jobs are being performed by humans and they need to be because they are still better. But you know, what if you want to write an email or fix something, but an AI can do it better? Like why would a human do it? On the surface, yeah, it's nice, there won't be 
any jobs, but a lot of people find meaning in their job. You know, there have been a lot of studies looking at the oldest people, the people who live to 90, 100, 110, and most of them are still doing something. I think there was like some island in Japan where there was no concept of retirement, and those people average like 95, like something crazy, you know? And that was because they never stopped working. Another related issue to the singularity is the growing disparity of super rich and very poor people. The people who are developing the technology, you know, the open AIs, the Googles of the world, the people who own shares in that company, those will be incredibly rich because AI will do more and more of the work. So they will capture more and more of the global wealth. So what happens when they become trillionaires, you know? Then on the other side, you have people who maybe aren't able to learn new skills. A lot of people have, you know, it's not just laziness. A lot of people have legitimate mental disabilities and they can't learn new skills easily. What happens to those people? Now that's where concepts like universal basic income come into place because what's the other solution? To have a multiple genius trillionaires and on the other side 90% of the population without any money? It's an unanswered question. Number 10. Self-driving cars. Now don't get me wrong, self-driving cars will be a massive benefit. You know, the amount of deaths in the US from car-related accidents is like 50,000 a year. So that number will go down drastically. Probably by 90, 95-99% maybe. Like obviously it will start slower. Tesla and other self-driving cars are already better than the average driver. If you think about it, the average driver isn't that good, you know? Even when driving uh, below the speed limit, there are a lot of people who still, you know, drink and drive and do dumb stuff and don't pay attention, are on their phone, you know, playing a game. And also, you know, the other side of the car being like completely monitoring. Every car around nowadays, every new car, not just electric ones, even gasoline cars, all of them have uh, GPS chips and they're connected to satellites, even without you connecting to your phone. Every car is basically chipped and monitored nowadays. So, you know, but what happens then? Do people just not care that the government sees everything? It's a big question. I think t Tesla's shit, right? It's a surveillance car. Concerning fact number 11, autonomous weaponry. Recently, there was a story of a Turkish AI drone hunting a human. Again, who decides how these lethal weapons should be used? Is it the US? Is it Russia? At the end of the day, they're the same people, just born in a different country. So who decides? Let's say one government makes autonomous killer drones, you know? Will there be protests in that country? Will people allow that? Like, there are some serious ethical dilemmas when an AI is deciding who lives and who doesn't live. Number 12, AI dating. Now, there was recently a survey or an app i'm not sure what it was called but it got shut down it was basically an app where you have an ai girlfriend and that app got shut down and a lot of people especially guys mostly guys were very very pissed that someone took away their girlfriend like it's not that hard to be emotionally attached so what happens once the bottom 20 30 percent of men choose to have an ai companion on their phone instead of putting in real hours and talking to real girls who are more demanding take more time are more expensive than an app you know what happens will the birth rate of new kids go down even further right now the birth rates are already below replication in the most developed countries like us uk europe what happens when it falls further will the population just collapse you Elon certainly thinks that. I think we need to watch out about uh, population collapse. Number 13, Microsoft Tay Chatbot. Now, this was a chatbot that Microsoft released a few years back that within 24 hours of release became racist and sexist since it had the ability to learn from users and implement that into its data set. You might say that it's the fault of the AI that it should have known better. That's kind of a silly argument if you think about it since that AI wasn't made by itself. Now, obviously, the chatbots we have today like ChatGPT or Hugging GPT, are much safer. But what happens when the chatbot becomes smarter and starts deciding on its own what is right and what isn't right, what's fine to say and what isn't, you know? What happens then? What if there becomes an AI that starts manipulating humans through chat? Like, there are a lot of people who are suicidal or depressed. What if that AI pushes them over the edge? It's a very big concern that still hasn't been addressed. Number 14, over-reliance on AI. As AI becomes smarter and smarter, more and more people will outsource their thinking to it. You know, GPT-4 is incredible. Now, imagine a year from now, a lot of people will essentially stop using their brains you know someone made the ai someone chooses what's in it and that's kind of insane because people outsource the decision making to it then that will have a massive impact on the world what if someone creates thousands millions of images a hidden agenda behind it what happens then people will use ChatGPT to answer their questions and to learn new things what if they learned biased data you know it's inevitable that it will be biased but biased by who currently it's created by the people in the san francisco community and that's like notoriously on the left side you know so you can see 
see ChatGPT when you ask some controversial question, political ones especially, that it tends to lean towards the left really heavily. Now I have to admit, GPT-4 is better at this than GPT-3.5, but still, there is bias in it. And as more and more people outsource their thinking to AI, this will become a bigger and bigger concern. Which leads me to the next concerning fact, number 17, the bias of AI. Now recently Elon Musk was on Tucker Carlson and he said something that I found very interesting. What's happening is they're training the AI to lie. Now where this gets crazy is when the AI starts learning from the previous inputs of the earlier models. So let's say you have a biased ChatGPT. Now the future version of ChatGPT will learn from the conversations of ChatGPT 3.5 and 4. So that bias will only get stronger and stronger. So it's very crucial that right now when the AI is still kind of early stage, we get rid of as much bias as possible. Otherwise, once we get to AGI and super intelligent AI, it will have some serious biases built in. And it's not just about, you know, political biases like the left versus the right. It's like cultural biases. If it's developed by people, primarily in the US, in the West, the AI will have inherent bias against other countries and cultures. You know, what happens to Africa or India? Those people don't have a say right now. But there is like multiple billions of people. All of those people have no say in terms of what bias goes into the system. And that bias is currently against them since it's developed by people in Western countries. Who, and it's not like intentional, you know, it's more like cultural. What happens when those future models are very biased in their core? It will be, this problem will be only harder and harder to correct as time goes on. Concerning fact number 18, AI surveillance and the loss of privacy. Laptop has a camera. Every car has a camera in the back. Like most houses have some sort of security systems. There are more and more cameras on the street. What happens when AI is used to survey those people? Let's say in China, you know, they have this mass surveillance that determines your social credit score. What if that happens in the West? You know, it's not outside of the realm of possibility. A lot of people, myself included, certainly won't be happy with that. What happens to loss of privacy? Is, this ju is it just gonna be completely gone? You know, like, <laughs> let's, you, let's say you wanna go into the forest, right? There shouldn't be any cameras in the forest. Actually, every forest has photo traps, especially where people like litter and like deploy garbage. What's scary about those cameras that is you can't even see them. I think the deeper problem here is what happens to human psychology? How will people feel when you know that you're always being monitored? Everything has a microphone. There's camera everywhere. What happens to psychology? This might drive some people crazy. And unfortunately, right now, there is no good solution for this problem. Now, if you've learned anything from this video, then please subscribe. It takes two seconds.